So we have a brand new 12 to 35 Lumix Leica F2.8 stock lens for Micro Four Thirds. This is an update from the Mark I and the Mark II, which I've never owned, but I do have the Mark I. The Mark I came out in 2012, believe it or not, and then the Mark II came out in 2017. So I think it's been long overdue to get the Leica branded update. Now my experience with the Mark I is wonderful. As you can probably see, this is battered and bruised and scuffed and it doesn't take filters anymore. It's loved. Let's just call it loved. Let's just say if I was selling this, I would not get much for it. But the image quality has remained wonderful throughout. And this is the lens that I always grab if I just need something reliable. In f2.8, it's fast enough that it will be great in most situations. I've even done some astrophotography with it. And it is stabilized as well. So we do have the dual stabilization when you pair it with a stabilized body. And it's small and it's light. The new one is no different in that respect. I think the new sort of gun metal gray color is much nicer than the blue. A little bit more premium as you would expect with the Leica branding and we do have a lot of updates across the board so I'll go through what's new now. We have brand new coating on the Mark III which means at 2.8 it's supposed to be sharper in the corners wide open. Now I will say I've had very little problems with this being sharp throughout so I'm very intrigued to see the difference between these two lenses. I've took some stuffy shots. I'll get to some creative shots in a minute but just to check the edge sharpness of the new lens I think it's very impressive. Another upgrade is we are supposed to have more control with our flaring, also due to the coating. The original does flare a little bit, particularly because I lost the lens hood about 10 minutes after having it. <laughs> the new one does have much better flare control. Regardless of the new features of this lens, which there are many more, I think it's just a wonderful testament to the Micro Four Thirds system that in 2023, we're still getting shiny new lenses on the roadmap. And I think it's just wonderful. Hopefully this shows the Micro Four Thirds shooters that the Micro Four Thirds isn't going anywhere. There's new products coming out all the time. Even though the lens lineup is stacked, there's always room for improvement. So I'm really happy that we're getting new stuff. All the versions of this lens are weather and dust sealed, which is very handy, particularly if you pair it with a GH6 or a G9, which is weather sealed. So the whole package is ready to go wherever you want to. I took this lens quad biking in Bratislava and there was sand, dust everywhere. And it survived. It survived admirably. So if the old one can do it, the new one certainly will be perfectly weather sealed. One thing on the spec list that caught my eye was the new one is supposed to be smaller and lighter. Now I can only assume that this is between the Mark II, which unfortunately I don't have. I thought, I thought the Mark I was so good I didn't feel like I needed to upgrade. But to my eyes, these two in terms of size and design look almost identical. They seem to be exactly the same size. So I think it may be that it's smaller than Mark II. Let me know in the comments if you own that lens if this looks different. But yeah, I don't think it's much smaller to be honest. I don't think it's much lighter, but it was light to begin with, so. In terms of image quality, I took some out and about shots with this, and I will say I've never been disappointed with a Leica branded lens in the Lumix lineup. The 9mm is superb, the 12 to 60 slower stock is superb. They've always been delightful, and the 25mm f1.4 Lumix Leica is one of my all time favourite lenses. Looking at the image quality and the dynamic range and, and just everything about this lens just continues that beautiful, sharp, beautiful colours. Everything is just controlled and delightful. I really like the image quality of the original but I do think there has been a bump in quality with the Mark III as you would expect. An interesting upgrade is we now have a closer minimal focus distance with the new version. So we can get closer to our subjects, get more macro like subjects. It works really well for getting separation from the background, getting nice, nice and close in terms of photography, but also in video as well. It really helps for product kind of shots as well as detail shots at weddings and things like that. So having a closer minimal focus distance is always good. According to the spec sheet, 17 mil is the sweet spot. So keep that in mind when you use it. And for your video fans amongst you, we have much more controlled focus breathing. I did some side-by-side -side tests and I do think you can see that the Mark III is much more controlled with focus breathing. Look and build. I do think the new one is prettier. The color is a little bit more professional and I do like that we have a more matte finish because the, the blue hue one is a little bit shinier. And while that's very nice, I do think this one looks the part a little bit more. Another update is we have the updated 
did a stabilization, the Power OIS in the Mark III. The Mark I was already stabilized, so you will get dual stabilization with both, but you're supposed to get much better stabilization with the new version. I tried to test this, right? And I probably should have tested it on a different camera, but on the GH6, I couldn't tell the difference because the stabilization in camera is so blooming good. I think this feature will really shine if you're putting this lens on a non-stabilized body and then you'll really see the difference with the new version. But the old one's pretty good. I used to rock this, the old one, on a G7 which wasn't stabilized at all and it, it did the job for video, it really did. So all this is a glowing review, right? The picture quality is great, the video quality is great, the stabilization is great. You've got upgrades across the board in terms of spec. The downside is the blooming cost. As is the way with a lot of these Leica branded lenses, it is quite a pricey lens. However, there's two ways you can look at this. I think if you're in the market for a new stock lens, you've got a brand new shiny option. If you're on more of a budget, surely the Mark I and the Mark II will now drop in price. So you've got options across the board, all three are stellar, but you can just pick and choose which one you prefer for your needs. I can see improvements on every aspect of this lens and it was a very good lens to begin with. So I do think it's definitely worth the money. However, I think if you already have a Mark 1 or a Mark 2, it may not necessarily be worth the money unless you are very, very video orientated. I think the focus breathing and the more controlled flares and the sharpness in the corners will make it worth it for you. But if you are sort of a hybrid shooter, I think the benefits are great, but maybe not worth all of that extra money. Unless you can get a good trading price for the original one. So what I'm saying is, basically, if you can find this at a good price, maybe paired with a camera body, like maybe you could buy this with a GH6, for instance, and get it at a good price, I think it's a superb, superb addition to your kit. However, if you're looking for a bargain, you could look at Mark 1 and Mark 2 versions of this lens because they're all blowing good. Watch this video next. It's the first wedding I ever shot with the GH6 when I first got it, and it does include the 35 to 100 and the 12 to 35, so you can see it in some real world action.